R4E here, or Iceman2383 if you're on Archery Talk, uh, bringing you an awesome video today. And in, in, if you follow me on Facebook, you already know that I'm going on my first elk hunt in September in Wyoming with my bow. All right. It's going to be an awesome time. I'm super excited. Can't wait to get out there. Now, that being said, I've been preparing myself for a little while for this hunt. Okay. Now, one of the biggest challenges that I think I face personally is the ability to judge distance correctly on a living elk. Okay. Reason I say that is because I'm from New York. I don't like to admit that, but yes, I'm from New York. Um, and I've never hunted elk before. So that being said, I'm kind of, I'm new to the whole game here. So I came to the conclusion that I'm going to need some sort of life-size elk target. So I started to look. And I looked and looked and looked and looked and looked. I couldn't find anything. The only thing I found that was close was uh, a 3D elk target, not naming the company, but the size wasn't correct, okay? And it was stupid expensive. It was like sixteen or $1,700 for this target. And I just, no way is that gonna happen. So I found a way, I found a technique, which I'm gonna show you in this video, that you can use to make your own life-size targets, okay, of any animal that you want, for under 20 bucks. Seriously. This elk target that you are gonna see today cost me $17.39 to make. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to find a suitable picture, okay? What I mean by that is exactly what you're looking for. You're gonna find, if you want a quartering and away shot, find that, broadside, find that, so on and so forth. So I found a picture that I'm gonna use for this target, okay? Now, I know that elk are eight feet long from nose to tail. Eight feet. Ocho. That's what I've found on the internet. That's the general consensus, and that's where I'm going to base my scale off of, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with this. Zoom in, zoom out, whatever i got to do in order to make this nose to tail dimension eight inches long. This is the section of the video where I'm going to confuse people, some people, not all, not everybody. Some some of y'all get this right away, but some of y'all, this is where I get my emails from. So people have to think. So what I'm going to do is transfer this image to four by eight sheet of plywood. How are you going to do that? This is how I'm going to do that. Eight inches long from nose to tail. If you don't see where I'm going with this yet, you will. I have a four by eight sheet of plywood, okay? So my dimension is already there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a piece of tracing paper. Lay it over the image. Then I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm going to trace it lightly, lightly on the tracing paper. Okay, I don't need any answering any emails from angry neighbors or angry brothers and sisters or angry parents about how you punctured their, their LCD computer screen with a pencil. So as you can see, we've traced it out, okay? Now, I've added some more details in here than you would actually need. The reason I did that is for future reference later on. I'm going to outline it with a Sharpie. since you're going to be making this out of plywood, right? This is going to be flimsy, right? So what we're going to do is instead of having this entire gap without any support from the other sections of the plywood, is I'm just going to extend this tine down to where it's actually touching into the plywood, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing with this one over here just for more support. Okay, so this is what we've drawn out right here. So this is gonna be the uh, basis of our, our target, okay? <clears throat> now, using tracing paper, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to whoops, measure out and mark, okay, four inches by eight inches, okay. Okay, so now we have a four inch by eight inch grid. Okay, what we're going to do with that, so we're going to set it on top of this target, okay, and we're just going to move it around just to find the best place to start. And then we're just going to outline just the very outside. Okay, so we have this. This is what we want the target to look like. Okay, and then we have this, which is what we want our plywood to look like. You'll see on the plywood how I have this grid line drawn out. All right, each one of these squares right here, this is one inch, as this is one inch. Okay, we're going to transfer it onto the plywood so where this is a foot and this is a foot. So for those of you that aren't understanding to this point, okay, what's going to happen is picture this right here is the wood. We're going to be cutting the silhouette out. So all we're going to do is we're going to find along these grid lines on the plywood wherever these lines intersect. We're going to do an about measurement, okay, and we're going to place a dot. And all we're going to do is connect the dots. Simple. All right, so this is what we got, okay? Um, you know, you're, you're gonna make mistakes. There's no, I mean, there's no two ways around that. You're gonna make mistakes. So what the pencil's for, it doesn't matter. Just don't get frustrated, just keep on it. And, and if you mess up so bad, you got another side of this plywood, okay? So just keep on it, don't get, don't get frustrated. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this outside with the jigsaw and start cutting away. All right, so here we are. We uh, cut everything out. Looks good. And I actually I went ahead and, and just cut some extra pieces for the tines, and I'm just going to glue those on. Um, and we're just about ready to paint. So. Okay, so everything's all cut out. The antlers are all glued up and secured on. I went through and uh, looked at my iPad here and kind of made you know references as to. Uh, you know, uh, where the shoulder was, where the elbow was, um, you know, back legs, shading, and all sorts of things like that. You can see like that. And uh, the only thing left to do right now is go outside and paint it. So let's go do that.
here we are. I know you're all excited about uh, the outcome of, of this project, after, uh, especially after I've gotten my hands on an airbrush. So um, without further ado, I'm going to show you that. Just as a side note, if you guys do this or if you guys do any other projects, you know, that you want to like uh, bring some, shed some light to, um, find me over on Facebook and feel free, post your stuff up. Seriously, like I don't care. Go ahead, do it. Just don't do anything nasty because I got kids on there. All right, kids are my fans too. All right, don't do anything uh, that you wouldn't want your kids to see. So, without further ado, this is the the end product. Let me back up here just a smidge. You have a life size animal that you're shooting at, okay, and. It's going to help you judge yardage, all right? It's going to help you focus on the, on, on the area that you need to focus on. So now we're going to, we're going to go shoot. Since the ending of this video, I've changed some things. Instead of putting my, my elk up against hay bales, okay, I've made a little 2x4 bench for my hips target that I, I, I drape some burlap over my hips target and I put the elk up against that. It stops my arrows dead in their tracks and, and it kind of has like a seamless feel to it. Like you don't see really the vitals uh, when you get out to a certain distance. So make sure you guys go and visit all of my sponsors, um, Badlands. Bad Medicine Archery and Hips Targets, it's because of them that these videos are possible. So make sure you go hit them up, say thank you, and um, that's it. Until next time, I'll see you guys soon. Later.